to everyone for being here, staff, commissioners, grant recipients. Right, glad you're here. Next, I'd like to go to our roll call. So please, when I call your name, please indicate that you're here. And Commissioner Conkle, you can unmute yourself. Uh, Chair David McCain, present. Vice Chair Kevin White. Present. Commissioner Margaret Steiger. Commissioner Paul Fire. Here, present. Commissioner John Daly. Commissioner Kristen Conkle. Present. And Commissioner Molly McCormick. Great. So we have quorum. So now I would like to invite our newest, our newest, oldest commissioner. Sorry, couldn't resist. To read our mission, vision, and land acknowledgement. Uh -huh. Okay, I'll take that insult. <laughs> okay. All right. So the vision. The city of Flagstaff is a culture and community that thrives in response to the climate crisis. Mission, to advise the sustainability division staff on matters related to climate and sustainability, support community projects through neighborhood sustainability grants, and provide feedback to the city council on sustainability issues. And our land acknowledgement. The Flagstaff City Council humbly acknowledges the ancestral homelands of the area's indigenous nations and original stewards. These lands, still inhabited by native descendants, border mountains sacred to indigenous peoples. We honor them, their legacies, their traditions, and their continued contributions. We celebrate, celebrate their past, present, and future generations who will forever know this place as home. Thank you, Commissioner Byer. Item four, public comment. Could I read the public comment? I think I need to read it first. Don't sure. I? Yeah. Okay. At this time, any member of the public may address the commission on any subject within their jurisdiction that is not scheduled before the commission on that day. Due to open meeting laws, the commission cannot discuss or act on items presented during this portion of the agenda. To address the commission on an item that is on the agenda, please use the Teams chat function. Simply type in public comment to indicate to the chair that you would like to comment. The chair will then recognize you when it is time for public comment, and staff will unmute your microphone if needed. Jenny Gaiman. Hi. So I wanted to do this beforehand, but I wanted to introduce Bree. Um, <laughs> Bree is our new minutes taker. So. Um, we are so thrilled to have her. Bree was an intern with us over the summer, which she happens to also be presenting on tonight. Um, but Bree has helped us out in a lot of different ways, and I'm just really excited that you're able to be here. So thank you, Bree. You're welcome. Great. Yeah, welcome, Bree. Thank you. Do we have any other any other public comments? None. I'd like to move to item five, which is the approval of our minutes. Commissioners, any feedback on the minutes? Yeah, I, Mr. Byer. Yeah, I did have one uh, suggested amendment, and that would be to um, add. I, I'd sent during the meeting. I mentioned that they were, I were sending links to these uh, articles that talked about the Forest Service uh, uh, and uh, approval with of some massive expansions at Snowball and uh, the two articles, one in the Daily Sun and one in the Guardian. And so I would like those um, those to be added to them so that people can read the background and not just have my two sentences summary. Um, so I guess that would be the, the one amendment and then I'm, maybe we can work on that first and then I'll just seek a little clarification. Okay. Yeah. Is that something we can do? I think. Yeah. Great. Yeah. That'll be in the motion, so you can go ahead with your second one. Okay. Um, yeah. So then I'm just wondering, you know, so at the time I said, you know, I'd like to read about this, and I would love to have, uh, you know, a proposed agenda item. So I'm just wondering, where does that go? You know, so I ask for an agenda item. When does it become one? <laughs> or do we have to collectively act to make it an agenda item, or you know, what? What? You know, so now the minute said I asked for it, but uh, it's not an agenda. Right. Item. So where, where do we go? From yeah, there? it goes into the document that that I and once our mm -hmm. new leadership is selected review with staff and together determine 
when that ends up. Okay. You know, so there's no like timelines per se, but we definitely so want to be basically trusting you to carry it forward. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and that's fine. I trust you both. I just wondered what that procedure yeah. is. No, it's a great question. Um, and so every yeah, when that happens during that time, um, Marissa keeps track of that. And so she has them and then inserts them into that document. And, and basically they try to get to it. Marissa, feel free to jump in. I know you were going to speak to this um, anyways and to and from, but. Yeah, I guess I could speak to it now. Um, staff could really use assistance in researching who to speak to, um, as that is taking some time. So if you do have an agenda item request, we'd love to ask that um, you let us know who you'd like us to reach out to, and then we'll move forward with that. But um, yeah, we do. We have all the agenda item requests. We haven't forgotten about them. We definitely want to get to them. Um, and just recognizing that we have had a lot of business that we need to get to as well. Yeah. Yeah. At the time, I did mention a few possibilities, but I guess I didn't want to. You know, I thought maybe uh, Joe West, the form, mm. uh, former supervisor for Cochrane International Forest, uh, maybe a, an indigenous person. Uh, but you know, I don't want to dictate who should be here or limit uh, who should be here. I thought perhaps the first thing might be just to have, if any city, whoever the city uh, government official who was most involved, if anyone was involved at all, if that person could come talk to us first rather than to get a uh, you know, big agenda item, you know, they might help me enough to know that that's all we need to do. Or they might say, yeah, um, here's what happened. And then I'd say, well, I need to talk to those people. <laughs> um, so I guess I'd rather start small than Okay, and you're also willing to or able to email Marissa at any point with any more updates on that in terms of other people you want to invite or yeah. anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you can talk to me at any time about that. Great. So any other any other additions or changes to the minutes? Okay, I move that we accept the August 25th minutes with Commissioner Byers amendment. Is there a second? Um, second, sure. <laughs> All right, so the chair moved that we accept the minutes with Commissioner Byers amendment. Commissioner Byers seconds the motion. Any discussion? Just as every week, I feel I should express my gratitude for um, for all of the staff for taking such thorough minutes. Yeah, absolutely. And I also appreciated the inclusion of the sentence that lets people know that there's documents at the end that refer to the items. So I think that's really helpful. All right, I'd like to bring the motion to a vote. So we have a motion to approve the August 25th, 2022 minutes. Motion from the chair, second with, with the amendments from Commissioner Beyer. Motion from the chair, seconded by Commissioner Beyer. So now, commissioners, I invite you to unmute Commissioner Conkle. And all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Motion passes, minutes are approved. Now moving on to our business items, but item 6A, Neighborhood Sustainability Grant Final Report. And Marissa, I hope you're doing better. We miss you. Go ahead. Thanks. And yeah, I'm sorry I can't be there with you this evening, but we are lucky enough to have a representative from Grand Canyon Youth here with us tonight. Um, ready to give their final report. So I'm going to share my screen and Claire, um, as soon as it pops up, if you'd like to take it away. Sure, um, for sitting, I'm for people online, and is it easy if I sit or should I stand and present to you? I, don't know. I think sitting's probably fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm from Grand Canyon Youth. You can uh, hit the next slide. <laughs> Uh, we take youth, 10 to 19 years old, on trips um, on the river and uh, the canyons of the southwest. And so we've been around in Flagstaff since 1998 and have served over 10,000 youth. Um, 
Oh, perfect. Uh, so our, our mission is to offer educational outdoor expeditions that connect young people to the transformative power of rivers and canyons of the Southwest. We do not just serve Flagstaff youth, but we serve almost half Flagstaff youth. So um, yeah, a, a lot of youth in schools here come on trips. Um, you can hit the slide. So this grant, we actually got in 2019. <laughs> so it was a really long time ago. Um, and I wasn't working at Grand Canyon Youth at that time. And then, uh, I, so I started um, last November. And when I started, um, <laughs> the executive director was like, you're writing grants. Wouldn't it be so wonderful if you saw a grant from start to finish? <laughs> so I actually was really heavily involved in this project, even though I'm the development director um, for Grand Canyon Youth. And sorry, for the people online, I'm Claire Magnuson. Um, but initially, this project, if you look at the bottom right, was it was a collaboration between Grand Canyon Youth, Terra Birds, and Ponderosa High School, but then COVID hit. Um, so it became not that. Um, Terra Birds was, had to pull out, as did Ponderosa High School, just based on volunteer um, rules. And then we're also, also a youth organization, and so we only started accepting volunteers back into our um, offices, in, including our front area, uh, in this last year. Um, but all the other people listed here became new collaborators. So it was really actually pretty wonderful and a huge gift to me as a new part of Grand Canyon Youth to be able to meet all of these people. The person that I would really like to point out is the first person. So Carol Fritz, Carol Fritzinger, Fritzinger who also goes by Fritz, is one of the founders of GCY and also a founder of um, Colton Garden. And so she, once we knew that Terra Birds wasn't going to be able to help us anymore, um, we asked her and she stepped in and became a huge help and continues to be one. So she's put in a, a massive amount of hours, um, but so have a, a, a whole bunch of landscape volunteers from our staff, youth, parents, um, as well as a whole bunch of free design consultation from Natural Channel Design, from Alan Hayden, uh, from different people that are involved with plants. <laughs> um, and then something that I found to be a challenge was trying to get like truck and trailer access. And so we got donated truck and trailer access um, through yeah. Azra and Seba and Arizona Fire Defense. Um, and then Gail G Gray, Gray Top, who uh, owns Let It Grow Native Plants, provided all of our native plants. Uh, you can go to the next slide. These are the top was one uh, initial design, and then the bottom one was the design that Fritz came up with is sort of added to it. But the initial project, which we were able to maintain all of these um, goals, even though the, the people that participated shifted slightly, but we were hoping to make a learning space. Um, we're at, in Sunnyside, and so we we're hoping to create sort of a beautiful outdoor space um, for the Sunnyside neighborhood and then also create volunteer opportunities for youth to give back and all of those things we were able to do. You can go to the next slide. So uh, we had a ton of volunteer time, seven volunteer days um, that were like big public volunteer days, but we had a ton of other volunteer time spent. Uh, we had 57 unique volunteers, um, seven months to complete, 4,000 of uh, materials. So we, this grant came at the same time as uh, another grant from the city of Flagstaff, which is a beautification um, grant. So we, we kind of combined that and uh, we had over 300 hours of all volunteer labor involved. You can go to the next slide. So then the rest is just sort of photos. So if you look at the top left, that's our before. This was what our space looked like. And so when we bought, we got this grant in 2019, we didn't own the building, but we actually, during COVID, were able to purchase the building. Um, so this is actually like a very, it felt very personal to the whole staff to like really move into this space. Uh, so we've got before and then after we had to, this, this, this area was also in the flood zone for the spruce drainage and had a massive flood in 2020. So um, we, we considered floodwaters as we were um, landscaping. So things like putting up rocks and, 
and trying to hold, both hold water onto our property and stop it from draining or from just immediately leaving. So then at the bottom, we've got photos of um, the project in action. You can go to the next slide. <clears throat> and then after all of the rain, here is what it looks like today. So uh, you can go to the next slide. We're just going to look at a whole bunch of different aspects of the building. <laughs> So there's the, the front as well. It was just like a gravel pad. And then um, there's Fritz gar uh, watering. We were able to create like a downspout river from the downspouts of the roof into like a little cobble river um, to do some passive watering in that space. And then here's some youth, but we had a lot of like tractors and tra people, you know, helping us get rock because we used a lot of rock in this project. Next slide. And this is what it looks like today. So this is our, our uh, little downspout river that goes through and waters. And it also is fed by um, all the water that we use to wash boats and wash coolers. Ready here. Um, next. This was just, we lost some flagstone one night and we put up these signs and then we got them back. <laughs> so I had to put that in there. We. <laughs> um, yeah, it was my it was our little heroic moment and then also felt very like the community was involved. <laughs> uh, you could go to the next slide. So this is another area that we hardscaped with um, with some flagstone, some Yavapai sandstone. The tree is the one tree there right by the B of the four. There's a tree. Yep, what, yep. Is, is that a native tree? Oh no. No, so, yeah, that's a Siberian elm, and it <laughs> accidentally somehow died in the process, so we're going to cut it down, <laughs> which is actually fine. We were, we were like, we, uh, yeah, it doesn't need to be there. Um, the other tree, though, in the back is a maple, and that is, uh, is, yeah. We can go to the next slide. We did put up some shade. Um, one of the things that we do in the front space is we have these big groups of like 30 youth um, gather in a circle. So we wanted to maintain some of that space. Uh, next slide. And then to the right of our door, this is our pollinator garden. Um, and so, and there's the maple tree. Uh, but so we, we put a lot of flagstone in that space as well. And then some native plants, uh, native pollinators. Next slide. And this is what it looks like today. Yeah, next slide. And then this is another angle. I had to get all the angles so this is you can see more of our, our flood wall um, that we built. Next slide. And this is what it looks like today. All right, I think there's only a few slides left, so maybe next slide. Oh, two of the kind of fun uh, educational parts of this project were that we've included a recycled uh, raised bed um, that is made from coolers that have worn out from river trips. And we also um, made a keyhole garden, which has a central compost. Uh, and those are both ideas of Fritz's. And if you hit the next slide, you can see that they were both doing incredibly well. <laughs> so we compost from the trips and from our office into this compost, um, as well as the Isabel compost. Next slide. So I think I'm probably out of time, but I um, just these are all of the things that we created with this grant, uh, which was a meeting area, flagstone meeting area, a downspout river, a perimeter flood wall, a pollinator garden, a raised veggie bed, a keyhole garden, and then educational signs. Next slide. So, and this is a, a, a quote about the kinds of things that might be educational for a youth and we were really excited for the outside of our building to reflect some of our values as an organization. Thank you for helping us do that. Okay, thank you so much and Marissa is Grand Canyon youth uh, eligible for this year's grant? Um, they are since they haven't received a grant since 2019. So if you would like to apply for funding, um, those grants are open through September 30th. Wonderful. It's $5,000 now. Oh my, gosh. oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. 
Dang. Yeah, we'd love to have you play. Again. We gotta keep the yeah. We have a whole backspace that needs another little. <laughs> I don't know if I want to be the person in yeah. charge, but. <laughs> well, that's really good yeah. to know. Um, I don't know if there's question, time for questions, but I'm happy to answer any, or if you have any, you can definitely email me if there's not time. Any questions, commissioners? Great, okay. yeah, thanks very much. Thank you. Moving on to item 6D, sustainability internship update. And Brianna or Anna? Brianna. Brianna, Brianna, go ahead. Oh, yeah, a wonderful meeting. Bye. Thank you all. Bye. Uh, so yeah, um, we're all ready to start with this. Yeah, it's just a presentation about my internship journey over the summer. Um, next slide, please. So how it started in the big picture, it started with the downtown community market, and it is still currently ongoing, my internship. The objective uh, of this internship is to increase and improve community engagement through various public events, such as the market. Uh, from improved uh, public inter... Oh. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm going to go along on here. It's up now. Sorry, I think it's on a timer. Um, I'll try to keep it on the right slide. Okay. Uh, yeah, so from improved public interaction education, uh, our aim was to expand knowledge about the dough. Flagstaff's unique environment, and also any current programs uh, that are being put on by the Sustainability Office. Um, next slide, please. So just a, um, it's like a general, uh, but just the general side of my responsibilities. Uh, I would set up a table at the downtown market, and I would have information for the public with upcoming events and current programs. I would participate in Sustainability Office meetings and team events. I would uh, prepare and execute projects. And I would also uh, participate in community engagement and education. Next slide, please. So more about the market. Um, yeah, every Wednesday from June 1st to December 7th, uh, I would go and set up a table and uh, we would always have a different theme in rotation every week. And those different themes were food waste and recycling, stream stewards and home power efficiency. Uh, each week there would be a different game for the public to play, learn from, and also win some prizes. Uh, and every week I would keep track of how many people I interacted with. So on the next slide, uh, these are the dates that I have and the number of people. Uh, I did miss out on about three weeks uh, to, due to a weather cancelization and also a week I was sick. But the grand total though, Next slide, please. 585 members of the public I spoke to in all those weeks. Uh, next slide, please. Another project to work on was Trivia Takeover. One of my personal hobbies is to host trivia at uh, the local Drinking Horn Meadery in downtown Flagstaff. Um, and yeah, as a form of community engagement, the Flagstaff Sustainability Office and Drinking Horn partnered for a trivia event open to the public. It was a free event. It was on September 14th, Wednesday. And yeah, everyone just had a really great time. Uh, and the categories and questions were climate change and sustainability themed with some other fun categories for people to enjoy. It's like kind of also curveballs too. And this is, a, this is just a flyer that I made for the event that was posted on social media. Next slide, please. So yeah, we had a total of 13 teams uh, and the picture that's kind of like up into the center, that is, the, those are the winners and they're posing with their prizes that they got courtesy of the sustainability office. And the picture that's over to uh, more so to the right, that is <laughs> most of the uh, sustainability office coming to play with the game. <laughs> and also just a representation of like just how many people were there because it was, it was packed. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, next slide, please. Those prizes are alcoholic beverages. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, well, for <laughs> drink <laughs> <laughs> well, drinking horn, they did also have a prize as well. Um, and it's uh, they call it a win a nickel. So if you win that, then your next glass of mead is only a dollar. Wow. Yeah, but sustainability, it was like a reusable bag and a water bottle, stuff like that. That's mm -hmm. uh, so the other project that I am still currently working on is called the Albert Project. And I was tasked to design a new and fun game for the sustainability office to bring to future events. Uh, the main goal is to create a game that would be eye-catching yet simple by design to draw in the public. 
And an inspiration about this was uh, the recycling wheel. If you're familiar with that, um, it's one of the games at the office. It is a wheel that people would just spin and it would land on a piece of material, garbage material, and you would have to tell me if it's recyclable in Flagstaff. What I noticed about it is that it was the most popular of all the games that I would have. And kids, especially, they wouldn't even really know what it was about. They just knew they had to go and spin it. <laughs> uh, so I wanted something that was going to be kind of similar to that. So the tar target demographic is mainly families with young children. However, this can be changed up to be all sorts of like people of all ages. Uh, so what it looks currently, next slide please. So yeah, the Albert project coming soon. This is what it currently looks like. Um, it, it is a Velcro dartboard game. Uh, and uh, he's holding the board, as you can see, Albert, the squirrel. And the players will throw the ball at the board and must answer a trivia question that is based on the target color and point number. An example of this, like green could be recycling and, uh, and they would just win various prizes as they go. But yeah, all he needs is just some paint and he's ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> next slide, please. So what's next in my internship? As I said earlier, uh, it is still currently ongoing. I was asked to uh, just kind of stay on for the remainder of my semester in my grad program, which I was absolutely happy to do. Um, this Saturday, I will be attending the uh, Science Festival at Wheeler Park. That is another assignment that I am currently ongoing. Um, and I am looking forward to the remainder of my internship at the Sibley office. Uh, next slide, please. So takeaways from the internship, I learned important factors in what makes a community engagement impactful and beneficial. Uh, I acquired important skills in project conception and execution. It is also important to participate with team building events and to also build camaraderie. I had a lot of fun with the sustainability office and it was really great to know everybody. Um, and yeah, these pictures here, this is just my time over at the community garden over on uh, O'Leary Street. And there I helped build a path out of all those wood chips there. We conquered that wood chip pile and we built a path like from the sidewalk to the garden and it was really cool. Um, really nice garden out there. But anyway, that's all I have for you guys. Any questions or comments? Great. Yeah, the question. I wonder if you'd be willing to share a couple of the important factors in what makes community engagement impact on the It's really just kind of just spreading that knowledge of like what is currently happening, like climate change wise in Flagstaff. Uh, some aspects that I would talk to about people, a uh, question would be like, oh, in about 100 years, what is the kind of like landscape going to kind of mostly rep like resemble in Flagstaff compared to another city in Arizona? And that is um, Prescott. And it's going to be predominantly more like grassland areas. And people are just really taken aback about that. They're just like, wow, we're going to be kind of losing our pines. And we're like, yeah, that's going to be kind of happening. Um, and also just engaging um, people that are not local, like people, because uh, over the summer I got a lot of different visitors. Mm -hmm. And they were also really intrigued about just what is happening in Flagstaff, uh, what could be happening in Flagstaff, and also kind of like taking that in into regards of like where they're from and what could be happening over there. And just like community engagement, getting involved in the programs that we have, um, like the stream stewards, uh, community stewards, and uh, just being more aware of like all the different programs and services that we offer. Yep. Great. Thank you. Any other questions, commissioners? Maybe I remember being at an event. It was a Make a Difference Day or something, mm -hmm. and and there was bling that was given away at the end. Mm -hmm. and, and I remember some of it was I thought trash. You know, so I would say think hard about bling that you give away, <laughs> <laughs> and maybe even tell people why chose it, you know, you might have a certain type of water bottle and tell mm -hmm. people why it was important. Oh, yeah. You know, whatever. And that why we chose this, um, you know, just to advance the sustainability goal. And I just remember at that van, I thought, a lot of this is going to end up in their trash can as soon as they get out of their car. And isn't that sad? <laughs> so uh, try and think ahead and mm -hmm. then avoid that. 
Uh, well, to, to comment on what you're saying, um, one of the objects that I would give as a prize is technically trash. It's, uh, it was recycled newspapers, it's a pencil. And I would uh, present that to the public, like, hey, you want to this pencil? And they're just like, oh, it's a pencil. And I'm like, oh, but look at it. It is made out of recycled material, yeah. and you cool. can still see the old cool. text on the pencil. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah that's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Any additional questions, commissioners? Thank you so much, Brianna. Appreciate you being here. And moving to our next item, 6C Sustainable Building Resolution Proposed Revisions. Ramon, welcome back. Good to see you. So good to see all of you, commissioners. Um, great. Well, I think I'll just kick off. Does that seem right, Jenny? And yes. Marissa, everyone? Fabulous. Okay. Great. Well, I suspect that I was probably the agenda item that may have given commissioners the most homework. Uh, there are quite a lot of documents associated uh, with uh, the sustainable building resolution. Uh, I'll spend hopefully just like five or so minutes giving just a little bit of background in case um, the homework was a little bit too cumbersome. Uh, but then I want to leave the rest of the time to be able to just kind of facilitate uh, an experience of uh, getting getting feedback from you all. Um, but I have been working on an initiative to update uh, the sustainable building resolution. Um, and the sustainable building resolution was actually first um, adopted in 2008. So I've actually got the 2008 document up here. I believe this was one of the things uh, that was included in uh, sort of the packet of, of documents. Uh, you'll see that, you know, it's a short resolution, single page uh, signatures, um, and it really was just talking about the standard that the uh, City of Flagstaff was going to hold itself to when commissioning new buildings uh, or doing major uh, renovations. This document was actually updated in 2014 um, and looks like this. It got a little bit longer. Um, it got a little bit more specific, um, still relatively short though, um, and is actually the existing sustainable building resolution that is on the books. Uh, it is saying that we will hold ourselves accountable to uh, achieving you know, lead silver, green globes, three globes, uh, and some other things as well. Um, in order to go from that 2008 document to this 2014 document, just to like a peek behind the scenes, some of what happens is what's known as redlining. Uh, so you take the old document and you basically do track changes, uh, but you strike out uh, old text that's no longer uh, relevant. You add in some like blue text. Uh, and so this is that example of what happened between 2008 uh, and 2014, which uh, I just really bring up as some context so that you'll understand why this was one of the documents uh, that was provided. Uh, being able to see that things that are being deleted are in red, uh, things that we are talking about uh, adding are in blue. Uh, and so this is where the document stands at the moment. Um, I also provided uh, what I believe is being referred to as version three of a memo, uh, which you will also see has quite a lot of formatting uh, throughout. Uh, the memo is perhaps the thing that's a little bit more narrative in nature. I know that sometimes a resolution can be kind of a rather dense document, uh, but it talks a little bit about the sort of purpose um, and the vision for uh, this update to the sustainable building resolution. And really, if I were to boil it down, there are sort of three main. Um, Mom, just a, just a second. I don't see yeah. that document in our handout. Did we, were we sent that? We uh, I believe this, this would have been sent that. on Tuesday. Is that accurate? You know what it was called? I, I'm just trying to look for it and I see oh a resolution. 2008-32 and then a 2014-09. Was there another one we were supposed to get? Okay. Sustainable building resolution. So Marissa sent a second email on Tuesday with follow-up oh, okay. information at 10:45 uh, in the morning. Okay, yeah. my bad. Great. Um, yeah. So, and part of the reason that Marissa 
was not able to send earlier uh, is because of part of the process that we are engaged in. Uh, we did not want this uh, resolution to be a sustainability staff only project. Uh, so I have been working with members from other departments, including housing, um, with uh, community development, uh, the real estate uh, division has been brought in. Um, and I feel like I'm forgetting oh, facilities. Uh, the new facilities uh, manager has also been a part of this as well. And we didn't want they were actively working um, on reviewing the red line document. So that was this one here. Um, and we we didn't want to present this to you when they were actively giving uh, up updates. Um, so what I sent and provided to Marissa was uh, V2. They were working on V1. Um, anyhow, uh, if I were to summarize uh, sort of the vision for the updates to the sustainable building resolution, uh, it is remaining um, sort of consistent in the idea of holding ourselves accountable. Um, you know, we've We've since passed the climate emergency declaration. We've adopted the carbon neutrality plan. Uh, simultaneously, there was the housing emergency declaration, uh, the adoption of the 10 year housing plan. And in fact, uh, just this year, there was the sustainable building incentive uh, that are all kind of like in the ether. There are things that we are striving towards and there are even some specific goals uh, that we are asking of uh, developers and industry in order to be able to receive incentives. Um, and so the vision here is to have a document that states that when Flagstaff, City of Flagstaff is procuring a new uh, building or that it is uh, planning major renovations, uh, what the standards that we will hold ourselves to in terms of efficiency and performance, uh, and in fact holding ourselves to the standard of um, procuring buildings that are emissions neutral. Uh, there is also the goal of recognizing that, um, you know, the, the conversation on climate uh, has been moving towards adaptation and resiliency and what sorts of resources uh, the city can provide during disruptive events. And so there is a section uh, that is about uh, making sure that when we are commissioning these new um, buildings uh, that we would be, here it is, um, that we would be designing them to be able to perform um, purposes that support sort of the resilience hub concept. Uh, so that might be being able to support uh, community members during extreme smoke events or extreme heat events or extreme cold events, or to be able to provide backup power, especially for um, medical medications and medical devices and things like that. Um, and so no longer sort of accepting uh, the the commissioning of major buildings that aren't sort of thinking about how they can serve the community. Uh, and then finally, there was a piece about uh, vacating uh, buildings. Uh, and this was where there was an opportunity to be able to support uh, some of the housing goals, uh, a recognition that cities often have buildings and properties in really desirable parts of town and that in the event that uh, a municipality were to be uh, vacating that building, there is a real opportunity if we hold ourselves accountable to trying to uh, essentially retrofit or convert or rehabilitate that building so that it could serve as housing uh, as well as low income housing. And so those are sort of the three pillars here. Uh, the standards that we will hold ourselves to, uh, making sure that they perform some resilience uh, functionality, uh, as well as sort of that when we step away. Um, and so really my vision here, uh, you will see I've opened a document. I've even uh, I've, I've made a copy. It now is for steering committee comments. Um, I have that for both the memo uh, that was sent that's sort of that more narrative document, uh, as well as the red line document here. Uh, and if you all had the opportunity to um, read it either with that fine tooth comb or to get up to speed here with uh, this 
uh, sort of orientation that I've given, uh, I would add comments uh, to one or both of these documents in, in a new color uh, because we are actively working on making version two into a version three. Uh, this is sort of an iterative process, and our goal is to bring this forward to council uh, for the first time on October 18th. And as I'm sure most commission members know, you know, you go to council in order to get comment, you incorporate council's comments, uh, and then we would be coming back a goal and being to come back in November. So uh, this is sort of that opportunity in the timeline for the commission to be able uh, to be able to give some feedback that I would love to capture. All right, commissioners, any any feedback for Ramon? Go ahead, Commissioner White. Thank you. Um, this yeah, this looks like really important work to be doing, so thank you for doing it. Um, I guess my biggest question, and I, um, I, I didn't, I didn't quite get to the fine tooth comb stage of reading through this, so my apologies if if this is addressed in the documents in the place that I missed. But um, like building materials themselves have a very um, substantial ecological impact. Like one of the one of the biggest um, sort one of the biggest carbon dioxide source um, sources of carbon dioxide emissions in the world is concrete production, mm -hmm. and you know timbers you know where timber is sourced also has you know profound sustainability um, implications, and there's sure. all sorts of things down the list you know from yeah. Teflon floors to um, lots of other things. So I'm I'm wondering um, is the as it stands does the document um, include um, a consideration of what materials are used and how materials are sourced in terms of whether a building is is, is emissions neutral, and if not, would that be um, would that be something that you that you would consider? I'm going to highlight this section here. Uh, sustainability Commission uh, comments will be in this sort of color. Um, okay. I think the comments that I can uh, make here is that a lot of what happens in the certification spaces. Uh, so whether that's uh, LEED or Green Globes or Living Building Challenge, uh, you know, they have these long checklists of what it means to be, uh, you know, LEED silver. And some of those have to do with the efficiency of appliances, but some of them do have to do with sourcing. Um, and so they're, you know, in some ways, I would say this is where we uh, get to the embodied emissions question um, of, um, of buildings. You know, we know that whatever new buildings are created will have some embodied emissions uh, within them, certainly. Uh, we would like to uh, ensure that the embodied emissions are taken into consideration, and we think that these um, programs themselves do help with some of that, certainly. Um, but that we, we know that the building is going to go up with sort of a carbon footprint, certainly. Uh, the emissions uh, neutral is an operational uh, sort of consideration at this time, um, wanting to ensure that the amount of energy that is being used um, is, is carbon neutral uh, on an annualized basis. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Byer? Sorry, if I can change? just add really quick. I. I so appreciate the comment, um, Chair Commissioner White, and I, you know, think that it is it's a really good thing. We 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 I think maybe we're tempted to go into that in certain phases, but also really don't want to reinvent the wheel because those third party rating systems that uh, Ramon named are formed by technical committees over decades, basically, right? People much more technical than we are, essentially, and so I think that that is kind of. Um, part of that, but definitely appreciate the, the consideration there. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Commissioner Byer, go ahead. Yeah, so um, I, I love the major changes that you've in, incorporated here. It's a great idea. Just wondering with regard to this last thing about how LEAD and these other programs specify a lot of those details for us, can you speak to this? But we've had previous resolutions saying we're complying with that 2008, 2014. Um, but, you know, that depends on somebody in the building department actually then reading all that stuff and doing it. Can maybe you can talk to the last two or three major projects the city has done. You know, have we done a good job? Um, or do you know? Um, because it's one that I can certainly speak to is the new courthouse. Um, 
the new courthouse decided to go with the green globes standard. Uh, and I believe that's the first um, city building anyway that has decided to go uh, down the green globe certification pathway. Um, may even be the first green globes uh, building in Flagstaff. I'm not sure there may be one or two others. Green globes is actually um, I believe it's a Canadian certification uh, sort of body. Uh, and there was just interest in exploring what it was like to seek the Green Globe certification uh, compared to the LEED certification. Uh, because one of the things that can be somewhat burdensome is the um, is the process of obtaining uh, that certification. So uh, quite a few of the builders in town have experience like going through the checklists for lead uh, and everything that's involved. Um, and, and the contractor was interested and we were interested in going through the checklist for green globes and, and being able to get some uh, sort of data and, and just that uh, experience to discern uh, what that was like. Um, and it sounded like there was uh, good reviews of the Green Globes uh, process and experience and, and working with the certifier. Um, so that's the one that I can speak to that uh, has like had the commissioning finished uh, during the time that I was there. And I actually got to go on, on the tour of the building uh, at two different stages uh, while it was going up uh, to see that we were, in fact, holding ourselves accountable to that Green Globe standard. And it's very helpful. If I can also add, if if we are not there, we don't get the certification, which is why third party certification is critical, right? It is not a within our own, right. like we don't decide that we get it. Yeah. The third party certification decides if we get it. Yeah. Um, and, and frankly, it's also just, it, you know, to build any of these buildings, there's quite a lot of consultant support as well. So, um, you know, it doesn't even depend on our capital team being lead certification experts, for instance. Right. Though, to Ramos' point, we are trying to learn about these different systems yeah. with every new building cool. we build, basically. That's very helpful. Um, and just to clarify, um, uh, then how do, I'm not sure I'll have any <laughs> substantial comments, but then how, how do I provide them? Uh, which of the many documents you've sent, I guess, this is the one, the one we're looking at is the one I should look at. And if I make comments, I, I do that in, in what way? Is it like a, a, a web shared document where I write in a comment and you see it? Or is it uh, I send you an email or you know, how, how would I do this? Right. Um, so. I guess <laughs> in some ways this was the opportunity for um, oh, okay for that uh, commentary. If you if some of you are interested in doing that fine tooth combing, um, we are working on sort of going from V2 to V3 with that internal staff uh, grouping. And so if you uh, do go through and you have comments, um, I would be open to receiving them by email uh, through next Wednesday. Okay. Given the timeline, that's perfectly reasonable. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any additional questions, commissioners? Okay, thank you, Ramon. Appreciate it. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Our next item, item D, Sustainability Commission elections. And Jenny, since she's here in person, will be leading that, that item. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Chair McCain. So I would like to uh, open the floor. Well, sorry. First, I have one announcement though that it does pertain to this just because it's about the makeup of the commission. Um, Commissioner Daly has resigned um, from the commission. He had to miss um, tonight's meeting as well as either, well, in the past, as well as in the future. Um, his work is getting quite busy with the Inflation Reduction Act um, as he is, works in solar um, and travel. So um, he did not feel he had the, time to make the commitment and be able to show up as much as he wanted to. So he has resigned um, that we will be working through that process to get a new uh, commissioner appointed by council. Um, but that does often sometimes take a while. We have to have the number of applications and ask to go to council, et cetera. So we will be um, working through that, but that is relevant to the conversation today. Um, so we will do both chair and vice chair tonight. Um, and so starting with chair, we have received one nomination 
uh, Vice Chair White has stepped up for us. And so I wanted to just first open up and see, are there any other nominations for chair? All right. Um, so, Kevin, Vice Chair White, I wanted to see, um, <laughs> would you be able to provide a statement of interest right now, just in case you had wanted to um, kind of let the commissioners know about your interest in this position? Yeah, it's, um, well, it's, I don't have much to say. It's been really a privilege to um, work with the Sustainability Commission, work with everyone here for the last few years. And um, if um, if elected to the position of chair, I would you know try to continue the really important work that um, our last few chairs um, chairs have done, um, Chair McCain most recently, and um, just continue the sustainability commission's work of um, to advance both ecological and social sustainability. And I would you know strive to make and keep this commission a welcoming space for all perspectives from both the public and, and commissioners. Thank you so much, Vice Chair White. So now it is up to the commission if someone would like to make a motion to vote to elect your chair. All right, so move. All right, we have a motion from Commissioner Byer to elect Vice Chair White as our new chair. Is there a second? This is Commissioner Conkle, I'll second. Okay, great. So we have a motion to elect Vice Chair White as our new chair, forwarded by Commissioner Byer, seconded by Commissioner Conkle. Is there any discussion? Well, I think. Vice Chair White, I think you have, uh, since you've been, was it four years or so? Or That's about that, yeah. Four years or so, so you've uh, been on the commission for a while, and as we all know, there's a transition period just to get to know how things function and uh, to acquaint yourselves with, with the work that we do. So you've gone through that period, and you've served for a number of years, and the fact that you're willing to move into the chair role is exciting. So I, uh, I am all in support. Thank you. Uh, you as our chair. Any other discussion? Call the question. Cal, okay, call the question. <laughs> we have a motion forwarded by Commissioner Byer to elect Vice Chair White as our next chair, seconded by Commissioner Conkle. You may unmute Commissioner Conkle. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Was supposed to say no. Motion passes. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Chair Thank to be you. chair elect. Chair elect. Chair elect and current vice chair Kevin White. Nice. Thank you. All right. Thanks, folks. So now we have vice chair, um, and so I would like to open it up to nominations for vice chair. So perhaps first, uh, at the previous meeting, we did, um, we suggested Commissioner Steiger as uh, vice chair. So is there? I believe Marissa has an update on that. Yeah, the update is on that first. Um, I did send an email out earlier this week, but Commissioner Steiger is no longer able to accept that nomination. So we do need a nomination for vice chair. I got that, but I just reported the minutes. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, well, I guess the obvious, since everybody declined, <laughs> I'm the only one you want to at this point. But so I guess I would like, you know, I'm, I'm happy to support this commission, but I feel so new, you know, and like you've had four years of experience, I've had two months. Um, so maybe some clarification on you know what what extra duty is involved as as vice chair um, so how much more would i be doing than i expect to do right now as a committee member so probably perhaps you'd be the best person to speak to that i think it largely depends on what you want um and also i guess the health and well-being of the of the serving chair <laughs> um, I mean, 
hoping to not experience any, you know, huge emergencies that would force you to step in in the, in the near future. But I think, you know, if, you know, if the chair is gone for any particular reason, either can't serve or is gone for any particular reason, then the vice chair steps up and okay. runs, that's one runs that's, for that's the That's not a hard one. And that's <laughs> pretty, I think really pretty much the only one that's really mandatory as part of the position. Um, if you would like to do other stuff, which I would encourage, then, um, then we can talk about that, you know, we can, we and the staff can talk about that and see what you want to step up to. But um, outside of the, outside of that, that's I mean that, that's really the okay. the only major responsibility to go with it. Okay. So it's really about the same, in other words, I mean, as long as you're healthy and <laughs> yeah. not traveling too much. <laughs> um, okay. Um, thank you. I will nominate <laughs> Commissioner Byer as vice chair. I'll you guys All second. Okay. Uh, I guess interest of the next short meeting. So <laughs> the nomination. Okay, so we have a nomination from the chair to elect Commissioner Byer as vice chair, seconded by Commissioner Conkel. Any discussion? I think it would be great, Commissioner Byer. It's not my responsibility. Right, right, right. And, be fine. Be fine. and um, it's a good way to, to learn a little bit, a little bit more, but not not a lot more. So, cool. any other discussion? Thanks. Yeah, thank you, thank you for putting yourself forward. Really appreciate it. All right, so I'd like to bring the motion to a vote. So we have a motion to elect Commissioner Byer as our vice chair, new vice chair. Motion by the chair, seconded by Commissioner Conkle. And so unmute yourself, yourself, Mr. Conkle, and all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Congratulations, Chair elect White, <laughs> Vice Chair elect Fire. All right. Wonderful. All right. And uh, I guess, I mean, the language I guess we had is you'll shadow. Us and we'll figure out what that means. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but yeah. So the reason we were doing the elections now, right, is to we had talked a year ago almost, right, about having this sort of shadowing period where um, the newly elected chair, the chair elect, would be able to sort of shadow and learn. And I, I think it's just a really nice. So there will be three meetings, or probably really, I don't, I just two. Okay. Um, and so, right, I think it's really just, you know, the agenda formation, like time is really, I think, the key thing. And so I think, um, you know, I'm wondering if, right, we would invite you into that meeting and into that discussion and we'll figure out how, how that will work. Um, but I, I'm just, I think it will be a great opportunity. Now that we're here, right, we had this discussion a year ago and now that we're here, I think it'll be great to be able to kind of pull you in um, why we still have Chair McCain and you can kind of see how he does it and, um, yeah, just to learn about how you might want to do it. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Great. So we'll be talking about that. So that brings us to item 6E, which is the carbon neutrality plan revisions. And back to Jenny Neiman. Hi, folks. Thanks so much. Um, I am going to share my screen. Quick second. Um, too many, too many things open right now. Marissa, can I confirm that y'all can see the screen in the, my presentation? Um, I can see it, Jenny. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, hi, folks. It's exciting to be back here with y'all, as always. Um, so I was here during our August meeting to talk about the carbon neutrality plan revision process. 
um, which is I'll talk about why we're here. And really, I am just here to check in again, let you know about progress we've made. And I, I want to have a specific conversation today about how we talk about the financial investment needed. Um, we're not adding a lot of new content in this revision, and that is very purposeful. We will add new content about our financial investment for the carbon neutrality plan. And so I, my hope is to really just use the commission as kind of a sounding board and get some feedback on how you think we might need to talk about this. I was hoping to have written this new content by now, but I haven't. Um, and so I will look forward to your ideas. But really quick, I just wanted to recap um, what I, we talked about last time. And so these slides are mostly the same, um, but I've also had a lot of other conversations, mostly internally, with other staff about this and, and how essentially we um, are where we're going and how we'll get here, basically. So we are revising the carbon neutrality plan because when we wrote the carbon neutrality plan, we committed to annual revisions. Um, for good reason, we have only eight years right now, right? And so it wouldn't be appropriate to only check in every five years, right, to see how we were doing, right, and see how we needed to adjust. However, when we started this, thinking about this, we were only 10 months in, right? And, and it was like, okay, what will our revisions look like? And, it, it, you know, we, that is not enough time to know how our policies are working, right? Or the structures that we've set up for the carbon neutrality plan implementation are working, um, frankly, because we're still setting up those structures, right? We're still getting our feet under us for this work. Um, the, we will have a new staff position, right? Um, that was our first staff position essentially after the adoption of the carbon neutrality plan, um, that position is not yet even advertised, right? We're hoping to advertise it in the next couple weeks and then hire over your probably months, right? But it takes a while to get your feet under you with a lot of this stuff. And so right now we have, for this revision, we are just going to do essentially a very limited and administrative revision. The revision will be about three, there will be three different types of revision. So the first type is new information. So the financial investment is, is our most significant part of new information. The next one is the adoption of the 10 year housing plan. Housing is deeply tied to climate action and climate change. And so we will be adding that in there. That though is already written. We will not be adding new content, right? Um, you know, we will just be including in the goals and the strategies from the housing plan into this plan. Um, as well as partner commitments, there's a little bit of new kind of content there, but we're really just going to have some very short blurbs about any use carbon neutrality commitment and FUSD and the county are both working on developing climate action goals. The next part is annual, standard annual revision. So we update our emissions inventory every year um, to let us know where we're at. And so we will be doing that. Um, Ramon handles that every summer working with NAU. Um, so we'll update our inventory just to let you know, know how our emissions changed in 2021. Um, they grew, right? Our emissions have been growing, and so we'll need to like <clears throat> figure out how to talk about that. So just, yes. Yeah, so all of these um, changes here, yes. there will be a new document that will still have the same name, but yes. it's the 2022 version. Exactly. Okay. Minor edits, right? Same structure, right? Same everything. We are working from the same exact document. Um, you know, we might have one page to talk about partner commitments of NAS, NAU, FUFC, and the county. Um, our inventory, we won't need more. Well, we'll figure it out, but right now there's a couple pages devoted to that, and we will just update that data, essentially. So do, do um, so, you know, people, anybody can go to the city website, download the plan, yes. help download the new plan. Yeah. Uh, just over the past two or three years, have you gotten much, other than the formal, you, you invite people to fill out the little form. Mm. Um, but then do people actually write to you uh, during the year and you get comments and questions or is it pretty quiet? Uh, not, it's a great question. Not about the plan specifically, right? And then we know that, right? Not a lot of people are downloading the plan to download a hundred page document, right? Yeah. And so that's why this is, uh, you know, we get a lot of comments about how we implement the plan and action, you know, that we're taking, et cetera, but we don't, not sure we've ever had someone say, you need to change this about the plan. So, Next year, when we do a more substantial revision, we will actually ask the community um, and say, what do we need to change about this, right? What do we need to move more quickly on? Um, we really can't move more slowly on anything else, but we will actually go out and ask for that community feedback. Um, we'll have to be really intentional about it, right? And then really trying to get people involved. But that's that's not really this year, but yeah, no, we don't really ever hear. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm just trying to understand how, how this yeah. rolls out. Okay, first. May I ask something tangent, slightly tangential? 
Um, do we have or are there plans to make like a like a very brief like three or four page semi like not very in depth but yes. version of the plan? We do have that. Do. Um, okay, how do you dedicate it? Yes, next meeting I'll bring some because I doubt okay. that you guys you all probably don't even have co hard copies of the plan which we can provide to you. So I will bring those next meeting um, as well as our three to four paper because that's and that's we know again like. We need those, and, it, and that we actually like invested and paid for it to be designed by a design firm, right? Because that is the key document um, that people will see, is the, I think it's four pages. Um, one more quick question. Yeah. Um, what kind of advertising venues are we like using to get out like that this plan exists and that people should like read the summary of it? <laughs> Sorry, can you say that? Oh, sorry, yeah. So like what kind of advertising or publicity venues are we using to um, to like let people know that this plan exists and that it's available for them to read and that feed and that feedback is good. Sure. Um, so generally, our um, social media efforts really kind of take that. Thank you so much, Ramon. Ramon sent me this so I can show this to you. Oh, cool. um, so our social media is really our, our big key, right? But frankly, we actually would rather them take climate action than read the plan, right? So we don't actually spend a ton of time talking about go read this plan, right? Um, because we know that that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that they do that. We do certainly link to it and we have built our climate page actually to, um, to, to try and break down the plan. Right. And so we have a page for every target area. So we have a page for electric mobility and we have a page for renewable energy. Right. To try and break down the plan so that there's actually just a web page on it as opposed to having to open up this big PDF document. And so that has been our main focus is when we talk about renewable energy, we try and point folks to the renewable energy page on our website. Right. Because that speaks to everything that's in the plan on the renewable on renewable energy. If that makes sense. Yeah. I they have suggestions later, but th th that, yes. thank you for humoring me. No, absolutely. Uh, it's so. me too. I did uh, have the carbon neutrality plan on my table during the markets as well. Oh, cool. Yeah, and I offered a, this kind of like that little summary, like pamphlet to people. Right. Mm -hmm. Did anyone look at it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. No, people took it, and I had the whole binder of the whole thing. Right. And there's like, uh, like you can you can find it online if you don't want to look at it <laughs> right right now. But they did take the the summarized little pamphlet that was offering. Sure. Yes. It's like, please don't give me a hard copy. Okay. You know, I mean, this, yeah, I, I can. It do seems it. counter. Um, yes. Uh, you know, I can. And so I'd say, as much as possible, encourage people to get an electronic version yeah. if there are people who can't um, handle it. Yeah, I can do without a hard copy too. Okay. Is, okay. is there a QR code link yeah. to? I know that's symbolic. <laughs> is there a QR code link to the web page? Yes. As well. Yeah. And so we're we're trying to get better at QR codes. All right. <laughs> Our cool. staff so, is helping us. <laughs> again, thank you for humoring me. Oh, no, it's a great question. And frankly, we would always love the commission's input on how we can do this better because we know that we also know that I think the carbon neutrality plan has like 47 web pages on it, right? Like we know that we're not like we could do better, right, with how we talk about this stuff. So we are always open to this feedback. Um, so real quickly, this it is eight pages, um, but it is it's a really nice document that tries to summarize a very dense you know thing um, quickly so thank you very much all right um back to the presentation where was i um so the um so that's the the new information then we will do the inventory finally plan consolidation is really important um, and this is about combining the 2018 Climate Action Adaptation Plan with the Carbon Neutrality Plan so that we have only one document. Um, very quickly, the reason why we have two documents, just to refresh, um, is in 2018, right as we were about to adopt the Car Climate Action Adaptation Plan, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, came out with the 1.5C report, um, which kind of talked about how we need to move much more quickly. Our cap, the, the 2018 plan, had been written on Paris goals, basically. And the 1.5 report basically said you need to move much more quickly than Paris goals. Um, and so this really came from residents um, who started the citizen position, which led to the climate emergency, which led to the carbon neutrality plan. So 
um, as much as we can, we like to give the credit to that to the residents because we said we need to talk about this, um, but we're going to pass this plan right now because we have it in front of us, right? And the residents said, yeah, we're ready to talk about it right now. Here's your petition. Here's the climate emergency, et cetera. So um, that is why we have two plans because that carbon neutrality plan, we want it to work very, very quickly and only focus on rapid emissions reduction as opposed to both resilience and emissions reduction. And so in that carbon neutrality plan, we said for resilience items, please refer to the 2018 climate action and adaptation plan. Well, that led to us having two plans and now is time to combine them. Um, we knew we were gonna get here. We got here a little bit sooner than we thought we would, but um, you know, it, everything evolved very quickly. So we're happily going to be moving into just one document now. Um, so this is a new slide and I just wanted to kind of everything I just talked about really reiterate that um, in 20 the 2022 plan will now cover both rapid decarbonization as well as adaptation. We will have one climate plan and we will no longer rely on the 2018 cap. We will add five new target areas to the carbon neutrality plan. And so this is these four, which are carryovers from the cap. We will be updating them slightly in a limited way. Um, we also will add a full on housing target area. Um, I'm not sure if I knew that when I talked to y'all last time, but we're just going to create a housing target area to reiterate the goals of the housing plan in that. Um, so the goal, the housing plan actually has like four key ways that they're going to accomplish their goals. Um, and so we will be adding those as strategies. Um, the goals in there will be the housing plan goals and how the housing plan talks about um, how much housing we need and what we will do to ensure housing for the folks in Flagstaff. So we're really excited about that portion and, and just to further the integration of housing and climate. Um, but these four target areas that come from the carbon neutrality plan I did just want to focus on them because when I left last time, I sort of closed with, you have a moment to read the cat and think about these and think about anything that we should update in these target areas. Um, I would love to hear it. And I just wanted to ask that question again. Um, if you have not looked at it, that is 100% fine. I We are still taking um, suggestions essentially on these. And so, um, we can send out the link to the cap at the end of this meeting. After this meeting, I can get with Marissa. Um, and, and really the question is, what has really fundamentally changed since 2018 in these areas, right? We are getting that input from staff. Um, staff is telling us from both our open space team and our fire department, right, for the natural environment, which really speaks about forests, right, and open spaces. Um, they are providing us updates. Same for water, same for actually everywhere. The county is also providing us updates on public health, which we are deeply excited about. Um, but if you are very interested in this, we would love your input if you have comments and, and we'll take your edits um, really for the next two weeks is when I need to wrap everything up. So um, we'll send a reminder about this afterwards, but that is just a um, continual offer if you'd like to have at it. Again, we're not going to blow each target area up, right? The, the goal is to just update it as needed um, because, you know, we did have a lot of public input on them originally. Um, but yeah, so we're ready. If I could ask a question just for a point of clarification. Of so um, is there any difference in terms of like regulation, implementation, whatnot, between the ad, um, carbon added, between the cap and the CNP? There is not. They're both uh, council adopted documents. Um, they're both policy documents. So they are not codes, right? Um, they are not, you know, regulations, right? They are adopted by resolution as opposed to ordinance um, because of that. And so, but what that matters though is that they support our policy development, right? And that's why they're key and that's why we want just one document, right? They also support, you know, we do, when we now um, collect, uh, budget requests across the city, right, through our annual budget process. We have now asked, started to ask team members, what CMP strategy does this relate to? So what climate action strategy does this relate to from this plan? Well, we want to only refer to one plan, right? And so what we're doing is we're trying to get staff to kind of tie them in so that we can collect data on, yeah, all these budget requests will support decreased dependence on cars or electric mobility or resilience or whatever, right? And so they are used for budget development, for policy development, et cetera. Thank you. Yeah. So when this 
merge plan, I guess one of the major things to me is merging this 2018 plan. It's the number one thing, yes. Yeah. And that's a lot, that's more than this minor cut and paste edit. That's a big job. Yeah. And uh, so then that there will be this new document. And that'll first be a draft. And, and then... So it will, um, actually, let me. Where is that? It so will, in, we, in some ways, see, I'd rather look at that rather than tell you, oh, here's how to merge it. Right. Let me just see how you merge it. <laughs> and then, I, then I'll tell you, oh man, there's a disconnect here. Right. Um, right. So, so I, I would appreciate, you know, that, that would be easier for me to comment on yep. one document than two. No. And so, yeah, so then when, what's the timeline for this new document? And then we come to you. That is very helpful. So, ideally, that new document gets created in the next two weeks. Um, and, um, the challenge though, so we will be going to, and I have these dates at the end, we will be going to council on October 25th um, with a draft document, right? Um, with that draft. The count, the commission meeting, I believe that month is that same week, right? So I believe we meet on the 27th. And so we will be talking to you all after that, right? Um, I can though email out the draft when I have it in about two weeks to y'all. Um, and would love your like comments and feedback individually if that if that's the preferred thing. I absolutely understand that, um, and and why. So we will also have a little bit of time. We don't want to make too many changes after we talk to council. Right is the challenge. Um, we will be going asking council for adoption on December sixth. So that is kind of thank you. That's a that's the timeline of, of where we're going with this. I've never seen anything happen. <laughs> but we it, it must because <laughs> December sixth is this council uh, last uh, session work uh, council meeting, so it okay. has to be on time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Um, so I wanted to kind of break this out because I don't think we talked about this last time. We do have a resilience item in the carbon neutrality plan, and we are moving to a new honeycomb. And so the um, see my cursor. These are our new ones. They're in kind of an orange, though I'm not sure it's very easy to see, but affordable housing, economic prosperity and recreation, health and safety, natural environments, and water resources. And so I'm not exactly sure. We will probably like retitle these, and it's not going to look exactly like this, but essentially the, the carbon neutrality plan is going from nine target areas to 14, um, which is quite a lot. But, you know, these are fairly small, right? Clean electricity is fairly targeted, right? So, um, yeah, those will be the um, new target areas. Again, we, they will likely also have different names. Um, we're still working on many things. Um, but this is the honeycomb we are moving forward. Yes. Every time I see a honeycomb, I think it does nothing for me. <laughs> That's helpful. <laughs> yeah, because no, it doesn't. I mean, I know these are all related and some related to strengthening and upholding, but you know, the advantage of a honeycomb versus uh, an outline with mm -hmm. one, two, three, four cate categories in each other. Yes. Um, in some ways, my mind works better that way. Here's these four categories with the subcategories. The honeycomb makes me think, oh, carbon dioxide removal, it's sitting right next to these three. Does that mean it's ah. more related to these three than those? You know, so it's to me a honeycomb is a complete total uh, distraction. I, I hate honeycombs. <laughs> I will just throw that out. There. <laughs> I really appreciate that, and this is the perfect time for that feedback as we are figuring out how to work. Because I look at this too, and I'm like, it's too many now for yeah. honeycombs. So right. yeah. that and, is and it doesn't convey to if you know yeah. if, if there was really a the space related space concept. Right. Then I'd say, oh, that's helpful. But, but it's not, but it doesn't. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Like, yeah, I think it does imply some kind of relationship with adjacent hexagons, which is misleading. Yeah. Right. More, 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 more pooping, more. <laughs> All right. This is good. Or if, do I have enough time for like another random thought for me? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm just curious. So, like, this idea of where it fits. So I feel like one of the big things that we need to do to to like move to a less ecologically draining um, society is to build social and economic systems that makes it easy for that makes it easy for people to um, easy for people to not emit as as much. Yes. So. So for you know for, for example instead of you know instead of telling you know telling people to you know instead of just telling people to use 
um, instead of telling people, just telling people to like do things that have a lower carbon footprint, you know, make it easy for, you know, make it easier for people to, to do that than, than the alternative, right? Yes. And I'm curious if there's a spot on, like among those, like um, among these, is there a spot where that where that concept fits? Probably sustainable consumption and waste management. Uh -huh. um, most of our consumption and waste work really does focus on reducing consumption and optimizing consumption as opposed to waste. So if we're talking about essentially consumerism, um, in in a way that 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 is more of something that undergirds everything, right? Like we actually we don't talk about the environmental be benefits of things. We talk about how your life will be better by doing X, Y, or Z, or you will save money or your home will be more comfortable. That is pretty fundamental to the way that we talk to the community and or try to at least, right? Um, and also just fundamentals of behavior change, right? People don't change behavior because it's sustainable. They change behavior because of many, many other reasons. So absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Again, thank you. Yeah, of course. Uh, Ramon, I cannot um, see your comment. I just saw it pop up on the big screen, but feel free to jump in. Great. My comment was just if it's appropriate to comment, I'd be happy to um, really appreciate the idea. And I would perhaps offer uh, the thesis that that thought is embedded in so many of these uh, pieces of the honeycomb, right? The decreased dependence on cars. If we make a community that is less dependent on cars and it's really easy for people uh, to still have good mobility and do the things that they need uh, in a way that's ecologically less destructive, right? Uh, some of the, the fuel switching and, and like thinking about building homes that are just using the cleanest energy source available, electricity, right? And then it's not about as much like, uh, you know, putting solar on your own roof or, you know, what appliance have you chosen? We're, we're trying to move the systems into a, a place where people don't necessarily have to have it top of mind all the time, but that it can be the default um, sort of thing that just like as they go through their life, they're they're using electricity that is constantly getting cleaner. So just want to really appreciate the, the comment um, and offer sort of the hope that so much of like what's embedded in the honeycomb is uh, sort of striving towards that outcome. Thank you. Thanks so much. Ron. Much better than the way I said it. Um, so maybe about eight minutes. Okay. We'll move to the yeah. financial stuff. So um, new information again. I, I, we've already talked about this, but the housing plan we will be pulling in it pretty much word for word. Partner commitment. So this is where I would love. Um, the commission's input. And um, again, we only have eight minutes now, but I, I really wanted to um, just open up the, the floor for feedback. I gave this number to you all very quickly um, last uh, month. And, you know, I there's a lot more information actually on page two of uh, the piece of paper I just handed out. And I apologize I didn't have this to send to y'all in advance. Commissioner Conkle, I did put a link in the chat um, to the document that we're looking at. So I'm hoping you can access that um, and let me know if not. Yeah, I have it up. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Commissioner Huckle. Um, So looking at page two is really, I wanted to kind of explain that number a little bit more. So $600 million is a, is a very large cost. Um, the net benefit um, of $22 million means that the total benefit is $621 million, right? Um, and so that is a, a really important thing. But really what I'm seeking is just feedback on, you know, these are going to be very big numbers, right? They are, we have presented them to council, but, you know, we have not really communicated with the community about this. And so I would love any feedback on kind of recommendations even for, you know, what you would want to know when you are seeing these numbers, right, to help you feel better about this investment and, and what kind of could be couched in. And so I wanted to, again, provide a bit more information because we went through this so quickly um, in August. But, you know, so on page two, um, that $600 million is made up of a lot of things. So the Active Transportation Master Plan um, is going to council in October, and that has a $200 million price tag on it, right? 
we're not asking council to adopt a $200 million price tag. We're asking them to adopt the plan. But if we were to fully implement, right, all of the active transportation projects that we need, it would be $200 million, right? So that's about a third of the total investment. Uh, clean energy projects, that would be $38 million, which would look like, you know, a solar uh, installation out at Red Gap Ranch, for instance. Landfill gas capture is something that, you know, will, you know, we're working on when that would be required, et cetera, but that's $11 million. Uh, recycling and composting, $19 million. City fleet investments, $2 million. Other big ticket items. So beyond those kind of things that are covered in a lot of our city planning, um, big ticket items. So electrification rebates and bulk buys. So this would be if we did like bulk purchases of heat pumps, for example, that's $100 million. So that's a full one sixth of this. Uh, deep energy retrofit programs, $150 million. Um, and then carbon dioxide removal, $47 million. So we actually almost put everything on that list. Um, but I wanted to just give you all some more context for this because $600 million is obviously a very big number. I also wanted to talk about when we talked with council about this, we did pull up Ann Arbor's plan. Um, they have A20 plan for carbon neutrality. We rely on it a lot when creating our plan. Um, they have about a $1 billion um, number. They have, um, it's, it's gonna be, Ramon, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but they're, they are able to, uh, reduce more emissions for a lower cost per ton than we are uh, due to some of the state legislation that they have that allows them to do certain things. Um, so it has been helpful for us to understand that they can do many different things with community solar, et cetera. Is that correct, Ramon? It is, yeah. So Michigan has uh, allowed community choice aggregation, which is something That's that it. is like of interest here in Arizona. Um, but until that is, uh, available. It's like if, if community choice aggregation, for example, were to become available to us in Arizona, then suddenly this price tag could come down uh, right. because the way that, you know, we're trying to go, uh, you know, envision how much it would cost is based on the current sort of political legislative uh, landscape. So there, there are plenty of opportunities when you look at the $600 million uh, price tag to be able to potentially reduce it by policy um, or by other action. Thank you, Ramon. Maybe just a little clarification, maybe when you present this number, yeah. uh, 600 million or so good, to say uh, uh, or how much of this is actually is, is all from in the city budget? Yes. So 100 percent be in city budget. So no, sorry. No, well, okay. So but, make that yes, great question. <laughs> yeah, so make that clear. And then over how many years it would be, you know, is six hundred million dollars in one year, ten years, by twenty thirty. Yeah. Um, you know, so so just uh, reduce the sticker shock a little bit to uh, sort of a little asterisk saying uh, how much is coming from the city budgets over how many years. Um, that, that would be nice. To Thank know. you. And and that is the last part of page two is potential funding sources. This is uh, not six hundred million dollars, but you're right. Like it, as we present that, and Ramon, I don't think we have worked out how much would be the city or not, but that. Um, and I I, I don't I, I know we said we would ask for your feedback, so I want to just hold time for that. But that is something we'll work on certainly. Okay. And I, guess I think perhaps one of the questions even to bring to the commission is how, if there are thoughts about presenting the uncertainty there, right? Because at the moment, I would say that there is sort of this sense that it's 600 million, uh, you know, sort of asterisks like that, that would be on the city. Uh, however, then, you know, the the IRA just came out and you could potentially like subtract a big chunk of that from the IRA. We didn't know about that two months ago, right? So there is sort of this sense of like it costs this much and uh, there's constant updates in terms of where is that money coming from uh, prior to securing any funds. There is sort of this sense that, you know, this is this is the price tag for the city, um, but certainly it is not our ambition to be uh, paying for $600 million from the general fund that is raised from taxpayers. So what's missing for me in this is, you know, the real imbalance you have, you lay out very clearly, you know, obviously estimates of what the investment is, but what about the benefit? Can you lay that out in a way that has equal weight? I mean, I think that's essential if you want people to be able to appreciate a $22 billion net benefit. I think it's super important to do that. Is that something you can do? Absolutely. It's fantastic to be back. Thank you. 
I was wondering that too in terms of just how the benefit is calculated in this case and what's included and what's not. Mm -hmm. And and what so it actually is is it's it's a great story there is that this doesn't include public health benefits, right? It doesn't include right. mental health benefits. Yeah. It is actually dollars and cents benefits in energy yeah. savings, et cetera. And so we yeah. can we can give both the dollars and cents benefits that we know as well as then say and there are public health benefits, there are mental health benefits, there's all of these other wonderful things that we need to One is the fiscal and then the fiscal and then the others, you know. The other it's, one is very hard to put Yes, okay. They're well, right? but, right. but you know, they should be listed. You know, it's not all dollars. You know? Good point. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. So and list them out. It's community well-being. It's right. forest well-being. I mean, I think those are yeah. obviously hard to quantify, but essential to be part of the presentation. I know we're out of time. But, you know, I remember thinking about for 20 years now, I've been compound better carbon neutrality. And that, you know, the biggest wedge is that the offsets. And it's the thing that we know the least about. Um, you know, so I don't know. We can't deal with that now. But sooner or later, we there has to be some transparency that yeah, it is the biggest wedge. And we don't know what the people are doing. But we really, we really don't. Uh, and we don't know how reliable it is. But anyway, that, that should be two years down the road. Okay. Well, and I, Ramon is our lead on that, and I will invite, you know, we can always come back and have that conversation yeah. too. Yeah, I mean, it's the scariest part, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, we can, it's the part we have the least control over too, so let's do the other parts as best. Yes, absolutely, and I think that that is, you know, I don't, I don't we may be updating some of our messaging there, right, so to say that we've really been able to um, tighten our messaging on that, right? And and when even when Ramon is presenting about carbon dioxide removal, right? The message is still, and we must mitigate as much as we can, right? And keep reducing that. And so I think that that's a great point. I know we're getting close to time. Any other lasting thoughts? I can, I, I we are also open, feel free to email Marissa or myself if you keep looking at this and say, you know what? This is the message I really need to hear. And again, I want to I want to be clear. This is not the message we are intending to take forward. This was me very quickly trying to put together everything we like. Just more background for y'all on this. This is not any public in any way, right? Um, we have yet to, to to write that, but that's why I really wanted to talk to y'all to say, you know, think about what, um, yeah, we should, how we should be framing this essentially. All right, thanks so much, Thank Jenny. So our next item is item G, October litter cleanup. So hopefully you read the item in our agenda summaries. So we have some responsibility with not a lot of accountability, I guess, to clean up Aspen Avenue, run, running right in front of city council. We did a cleanup in, I put it on there, 2019-ish, I think. I know we're way behind. I mean, they should, they should boot us out. You know? But I thought it'd be fun to to have that, both because we have some responsibility for that, and just fun to get out of a dodgy room and your own room, watching this on video and out into the world and do some work together. So, thank you all for replying to the doodle poll. And unfortunately, we have. We have zero dates that everybody can come to. Whoa, kind of depressing, but I'm gonna I'm gonna make an executive decision and choose October 5th, Wednesday, October 5th, from 5:30 to 7:30 as our date and time, and mostly because that's the soonest event we have, and hopefully between the rain and the snow and the cold, that will be a time that's somewhat comfortable for us to be outside. So that is the the date and time, and, and Steve, you're the you're the man. Can you tell us what what you'll do and how that will work for us on that day? What is the time again? 5.30, 5.30, Wednesday the 5th of October. All right. Until 7. My calendar will So for that, I can, well, when would you like the supplies, which include safety vests, disposable gloves, um, trash bags, recycling bags, trash pickers, as well as five gallon buckets for like sharp objects and stuff that may break through those plastic bags. So I can prepare uh, as many uh, supplies as you need for that day. 
Yeah, if you could have it here at five thirty, we just meet in the front of City yeah. Hall. Yeah, that'd be great. Do that. Yeah, that'd be great. And if I can just add, thanks so much, Commissioner Conkle. Commissioner Carmel did add to the chat. Um, I teach until five fifteen, but can come right after, so maybe a few minutes late. Okay. Cool. And I would open it up to staff if you if you want to <laughs> help us clean. That but it's us. us. It's us. It's the commission, right? Well, staff but you are welcome. October is our busiest month of the year, yeah, so I will say staff will not be there. No attachment. Okay, no attachment. Okay, no attachment. <laughs> just an invitation. If someone, if someone, I just like to clean. I like to pick stuff up. And, you know, so it's enriching to me. So that's just uh, optional. All right. So is there anything else we need to do with that? I guess that will be in the minutes. And uh, we can it. likely send you all a meeting request as well. A meeting request, yeah, that'd be great. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, super. So look forward to seeing you all then. And then uh, now moving to item H, which is our staff. Sorry, Commissioner. Uh, yeah, go Chair ahead. Chair McCain, um, we did skip over the uh, neighbors' family grant update. I'm shocked. <laughs> sorry about Marissa that. Marissa is here and ready. Yeah, sorry, Marissa. Go back to we'll go back to F. Alrighty. Thank you, Chair McCain. Uh, no worries about that. My update is very, very brief. Um, but I just want to confirm, can you all see my screen? OK. Yep. OK, perfect. Um, so here is where we are in our current grant cycle. Um, grants do close on September 30th. On October 6th, I will send you out the application materials um, for you all to start scoring. That first round of scores will be due October 31st. Um, November 3rd, I will be sending your questions out to applicants. November 10th, they will have had some time to answer those questions and will get those back to me. And then I will send those out to you on November 10th. Um, and you'll have a chance, like if the questions affect your scores, you'll have a chance to adjust your scores um, until November 14th when your final scores are due. Um, we will combine all of those scores and then um, have them ready for you all to discuss in the November 17th commission meeting um, where you will determine the recipients. And just as a reminder, this year we are not doing presentations from applicants. Um, so that meeting is just to discuss scores and um, the awarding of funds. Um, some updates. So our Albert design is complete. Thank you all so much for your feedback. <laughs> Very excited. I it looks love so it. Good. <laughs> yeah, um, so just kind of with where we are in our outreach and cycle right now, um, we are going to wait until next year's um, grant cycle to use him in our outreach just so we're not confusing people by changing um, the design but um, very exciting to have this design to use in future grant cycles um, both grant workshops are complete i just want to give a huge huge thank you to all of the commissioners who presented at either of the workshops um, and then a huge thank you um, to jenny i was sick this weekend and she really took the reins and helped Thing to plan um, and make sure that that could still happen to so Jana Weldon with beautification um, who also helps that happen from a staff perspective and then a huge 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 thank you to Commissioner Pyer and Chair McCain um, who completely presented the neighborhood sustainability grant portion um, I was so upset that I couldn't make it but I was so happy and reassured um, that you took that on so thank you very much um, for taking that on um, between both events, we did have seven total attendees. Um, I am excited because those attendees got really good one-on-ones with the commissioners, and I do think at least the ones from the Zoom workshop that I was a part of will apply. Um, but I would love feedback from the commissioners on how we can um, increase those numbers and increase our outreach, um, or just any feedback on the grant workshops um, at all, since you've all um, attended them. So I would love feedback on those events. Yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead. Would you like that now? I think we have a little time. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think I think for me, um, I would really focus on trying to engage underserved, underrepresented folks that that typically don't apply, and this is obviously a huge challenge. But some ideas that along those lines to perhaps invite 
community associations or churches or other institutions in those communities to co-sponsor events and possibly look to hold them at their facilities. So we're going to them rather than having them come to a city place. I mean, I think it's, if we really want people to apply that aren't the usual suspects, we really need to be much more aggressive in moving into those communities rather than expecting them to come to typical events. And I know that's more staff time and I know you guys are overwhelmed, so it's a tension in that, but I would really hope in the future that um, maybe maybe even connecting with other commissions, maybe connecting with the, the city staff person who's the Native American outreach person, um, really look at collaborating as much as possible um, because I was really disappointed that, you know, we had three people and all of them were, you know, kind of the usual suspects. I mean, I was quite disappointed about that. And I think, uh, I don't know, I'd like, to, I'd like to see us do better. And I know that's more staff time, but I, maybe the commission can do more as well along that time. And maybe that means we need a little more comprehensive planning on how we do that. Um, because I think it, it's important. It's important that we do a lot more to engage communities that, that will naturally uh, find out about this information. Absolutely. Thank you for that feedback. Um, does anybody else have any feedback also? Yeah, well, I, I'll second that, and I guess I would offer, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes I uh, want to cry when I see city staff attending things at 8 o'clock at night, and think, you know, Christ. You know. So, I mean, that's the sort of thing I could help with, you know, if you tell me, Paul, go to this, you know, the hard part is coming up with who to contact, but if you gave me a list of three uh, groups and you said go to the uh, church that's next to um, the Murdoch Center, you know, and go to their church service and talk to them and, uh, you know, just give, give me the assignment, I'll do it. And I would take two or three of those. Yeah. Um, that would be fine. Uh, the harder part is, you know, how to meaningfully decide where, where to send me. Uh, but if you do that, you know, I don't think it should be uh, city staff to go to these things. That's exactly the sort of thing us volunteers I, all, I will say, Marissa, if you don't mind me jumping in, um, to your feedback, this is feedback that we share. This is absolute, right? We talk about this probably every week in our office, right, of how do we get reach these communities. And, and what I would like to propose and, and maybe offer is, um, you know, we are, relationship building is something that we know we need to do much more of, right? The past few years have obviously been very difficult with it. Um, but it is something that is really critical to any of our work, right? And it's critical to diversifying who applies for grants, right? But it's also critical to climate action, resilience, right? It is fundamental. And so I actually think that there's a really great opportunity to have a conversation with the commission about how we do relationship building. And we can bring in Jenna, um, who's our climate engagement coordinator and really like is it's just relationship building is fundamental to her core and and to really talk about that because I think that you know we talk a lot about the commission's role I actually think that the commission has a, a huge opportunity to help with exactly what you're saying um, Commissioner Byer about helping us build those relationships and, and bridging right between sort of the sustainability world and some of these populations because it does not need to be staff um, and I get really excited thinking about the commission doing that in partnership with us. It's certainly something that we work with and we all work on right now, relationship building and are trying to put a priority on it. Um, but having the commission, you know, maybe can, you know, there are groups that don't trust city staff at all, right? But maybe they would trust you all as residents. So I just, I'm excited for that offer and, and, and this feedback because again, it is, it is um, feedback we deeply share and talk about on a, at least weekly basis. So. And I'd like to extend the discussion a little larger. I spoke with uh, Sarah Dector of Community mm -hmm. Development a couple days ago and kind of raised this issue with her. And, and this is not a sustainability issue. This is a citywide Correct. issue of engaging people that <clears throat> don't necessarily 
engaged. This is a huge, huge problem. And she mentioned to me that the that she's been doing some work around the regional plan, uh, really working with the neighborhood association relationships she has, and and uh, looking to engage the city communication department in more local links, structures and systems mm. that can do this citywide. And I think that's really exciting because even hearing like commission doing it, I mean, the commission has a lot of turnover, we're all working, but to institutionalize it in the city and maybe have volunteers that support that, you know, that would be uh, sustainable and robust in doing this. So I, that was exciting to me and I would love for Marissa and Jenny to stay connected with with Sarah around that. And if you hear anything from the communications department as well, definitely uh, be connected with that because I think it's for all the reasons you mentioned, it's essential if we want the carbon neutrality plan to work, if we want to get, uh, you know, people that aren't typically at these meetings, aren't typically on commissions like this for all city functions. It's hugely important. So. Um, Excited to have the discussion now and look forward to more discussion. Did you have anything else, Marissa? Um, is that all the feedback that we have? I'm happy to move on, but I don't want to cut anybody off. So actually, could you? I had a question in the previous slide. Go back to the previous slide. There was something I, that was triggered my mind. Oh, yeah. So here, um, so it's obvious when the, I get the things on October 6th, I know I have, uh, you'll, with the email, you'll tell me, get your scores by October 31st. That's lovely. Uh, so I can put it on my calendar. I just hate uh, living, uh, there was one thing, no, send questions. So part of our scores, we also generate questions and then you just send the questions on. Applicant deadline to answer commissioner questions. So maybe I just need to put on my calendar right now, that between the 10th and the 14th, I got four days to uh, read the responses and generate the final scores, right? That's correct. So, okay, so let, let me put that on my calendar right now. I, was, I, I opened up my calendar, but I didn't get it on there. So anytime I only have three days to do something, I, if it's not on my calendar, I'm screwed. Um, okay, so <laughs> final scores. Uh, Marissa, okay. yeah. yeah, I will yeah. just take this moment because Commissioner Conkle had chatted it just that she loves the logo. So sorry. Oh, oh, some yeah. <laughs> Someone to voice out. Sorry. Okay. Okay. I thought you were All right. So that. thank you. Uh, that, that I just wanted to get it on my calendar for almost one Okay. No problem. And I can send this update out to you all via email as well. So you can have that. Um, Okay, Were there, was there any other feedback about the grant workshops? I love the PowerPoint. Thank you for preparing that. That was great. That made it easy to step in. Great, yeah, and thank you for your edits too. I, I, it was very wordy, but yes, I, it's all laid out in there. So awesome, cool. Um, great. So moving on, um, I actually checked again this morning. Um, we have three complete applications. Um, we do get most of our applications on September 30th, um, so this is not very concerning, but um, that being said, I would like you to help us continue to spread the word. So we have had lots of social media posts. If you could help us continue to share those, um, I've sent you all the flyers and I can send them again, um, but please, please, please um, help us reach out to organizations who we may have missed. Um, we've emailed a lot, but I know there, I'm sure there are plenty that I don't know about, um, so please help us continue to spread the word about these grants as they are due very soon. Um, and that is all of my update. Um, so unless, are there any other questions? Great, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Marissa. Get well soon. Yeah. Thank you. And now to Steve for our staff update. Mm 
I could share it, Stephen. Yes, wouldn't mind. Thank you. I'm having some. I do not know <coughs> where it is. Uh, communications, presentations, commission. commission. Stephen, so things in the right place. Well, I was going to say, I'm impressed that you could just remember that. Uh, feel free to just start, and I can catch up, maybe. I don't remember what's on the first slide. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> other than uh, I know, I know, we start off with uh, current events, so. Uh, my name is Stephen Thompson. I'm the volunteer and event coordinator for the office. And as Jenny talked about earlier, the fall, September, and October are extremely busy as far as events and outreach go. Um, some of the highlights from the last couple of weeks, there's been a new uh, expert composter workshop that has been meeting on a weekly basis and is being well attended and there's another one coming up next week. Um, I believe they're taking a field trip out. Oh, I can't remember. It's on the slide somewhere. Um, but the first one was well attended. There's a good photo of it in the PowerPoint somewhere, I promise. And uh, today, just uh, a shout out to Discover Flagstaff. We worked with Discover Flagstaff today to do a large scale tourism cleanup. They typically do these uh, one in the spring and one in the fall. Today we cleaned up along Lucky Lane and picked up around 300 pounds of trash as well as 25 pounds of recycling. So that's not in the PowerPoint slide because it literally happened a few hours ago. So just a shout out there. So updates, current events. Okay, so uh, this coming weekend, uh, Bree will be in the, at the Festival of Science along with Sonoma Boynton, our stream stores coordinator. And there's also a community rummage sale happening uh, on the east side at Pine, Pine Forest Charter School. And that's a whole waste diversion event that uh, we are supporting some of our community partners in this first large scale rummage sale event. Um, as I mentioned, the composter workshop. Um, so the next one is on October. First, and uh, do we do want to invite all commissioners to the Sustainability Fall Festival, which we'll be hosting at the Sustainability Office on October 15th from noon to two uh, to celebrate all of our volunteers, contributors, and partners. It's just uh, get together, paint some pumpkins, eat some food, play some yard games, and have fun with us and celebrate all the work that we're able to accomplish. And, yeah. Oh my goodness, the technology is amazing. Oh, um, no, I'm no, sorry. Oh. It only shows it for you. There you go. Oh, I can click on sync to presenter. Nope. Still I got you. Work. I got you. It still doesn't work. Okay. Anyway, thank you. Uh, for the community stewards and stream stewards program, we have onboarded again Sonoma Boynton, who is continuing service with us into the winter, and we're really excited to have her continuing with us and looking forward to working with her more. And uh, since NAU has come back into session, we've had a lot of requests from those student groups who have adopted the avenues or foots to do cleanups in this past month. So not including what I just shared today with the tourism event today, we've had 193 volunteers spend over 350 hours cleaning up our streets and trail systems so far so that's miles and miles of trails and streets so a very 
uh, thankful for all of our committed community members. Uh, next slide. And the climate energy team, super busy as always. Um, the climate resilience project, uh, collaborative between the sustainability office and the library, hosted uh, the first uh, event in that series on the 13th. And nearly 30 community members uh, joined in that discussion all about climate, oh, well, it's a climate conversations and climate impacts and vulnerabilities within our city. And it actually made the front page of the Arizona Daily Sun. So in this presentation, there is a link to that. You can also uh, use the search engine to find it. It's a fun article and definitely encourage folks to join in and promote that. Um, uh, this month, the business advisory group provided input on revisions to the carbon neutrality plan, focusing on economic development, the financial investment needed. Got a pretty good overview of that this evening. And then the youth climate advisory group is already making some big plans in addition to recruiting additional members to increase representation of the youth voices in Flagstaff. Uh, they are planning a fall event, creating educational presentations on the carbon neutrality plan, uh, target areas, uh, starting an interschool climate action club and preparing to review and respond to the school district's climate action plan. So they're a bunch of go getters. Uh, <laughs> next slide. And uh, more fun climate energy team. Uh, staff are participating in a community resilience hub training designed for in depth learning about implementation, financial, and social returns, and community ownership. And then on the home weatherization rebate program, uh, it's been pretty popular. So rebates paid or in process over $12,000 in the last two and a half months. And this would have been 60% of the funding in previous years, but have more funding, so it's a, a smaller percentage. So that means we can help out many more. The average rebate is $1,100. So that's pretty substantial for a lot of our community members. Um, staff presented as an invited expert doing, during the APS Trade Ally webinar event on commercial electrification opportunities. Uh, next, please. Uh, and this is super exciting for the food systems team. The Flagstaff Sustainability Office was awarded a USDA Urban Agricultural Innovative Production Grant uh, for the amount that you see there, and it was approved by Council on the 6th. So that's huge. This is the first time that we've had something like this. Um, yeah, go food and waste team. They're crushing it. And then the Sustainability Flag Series, Preparing Your Garden for Winter Workshop, uh, was held on Benito Street on Tuesday, this past Tuesday. Um, staff members were there, joined by Terra Birds and Native Americans for Community Action, or NACA, to teach 20 community members about seed saving, covering crops, and mulching for the winter. So, so this, uh, what's going to happen with this $184,000? It's real money. So. Um, your office has this money, uh, I guess the grant language kind of specified for you. What do you do with it? Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I don't know all of the things, but Jenny can speak to So it is for the assessment and improvement of our food system. So we have never really done a food system assessment. Our food system. And so food for system. the Flagstaff food system, yep. And so we will be doing a comprehensive food system assessment, which is like a very, like, it's an acronym because it's a known term. We also will be making a Flagstaff like food action plan to improve that. So it kind of gives us the support to learn about our food system, do the real assessment, um, and then to kind of make a plan to improve it. We really, our food um, program has been our smallest program for a very long time. Currently has like half a staff member, you know, dedicated to it, and that is, right, Right, and it is one of our five program areas. And so we currently have half of a staff member dedicated to it, which is more than we've ever had. Um, and we have a food systems VISTA. So we're finally getting the sort of staff to be able to work on this. And now with this grant, we'll have really technical assistance to do it too, which is exciting. So we'll be learning things like, where does our food come from? Yes. How far away does it come from? Uh, how much is produced? Okay, cool. Yes. Uh, all right. 
things. Yeah, you know, I just see that title and I think, boy, that could mean about 20 different things. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and you could also, it probably would be worthy of a future agenda item, right? If, if you would like to learn more about it. I don't know. I'm not the meat of the best to speak about it. <laughs> and um, I, I did, when I was putting together the slides, I did truncate some things to save space on the PowerPoint. So in the monthly report, there's a lot more detail than what I'm mm -hmm. presenting and showing here too. So definitely dive into that monthly report as well. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so more food systems. Uh, staff co-hosted a fruit gleaning event with Flagstaff Food Link on Sunday the 18th, so this past weekend, in Coconino State's neighborhood. Uh, 14 community members showed up and collected about 60 pounds of crab apples. So there's some shots of them collecting in action. Next slide. Uh, materials management. So I uh, mentioned this already, the expert composter certification launched on September 12th. Um, it's a five week program that provides Flagstaff residents with the skills they need to become effective composters, educators, and advocates within their communities. And so that's a photo of a handful of the folks that have signed up and attended. Um, and then sustainable staff also participated in the NAU Community Welcome, which fosters a sense of community and connection between local and student residents. Uh, staff distributed recycling materials to about 175 households. So getting that information out about how to properly recycle in the city of Flagstaff. Next slide, please. And we're putting out quite a few different resources for people to understand about sustainability when uh, conducting your business uh, business within town. So these free resources and consultation program that helps businesses conserve resources and save money. Um, the first phase of the program includes short term rental guides and uh, for short term property managers and guests. Uh, we have links in there to those resources as well. So there's some pretty good guides out there and resources available. And those are all the updates that I have. And there's more in that monthly report too. Great. Thank you so much, Stephen. And I'd like to move us forward. We're a little over time. Hopefully you folks can stay on for a minute or two. Next is our to and from community events. I wanted to mention two Commissioner Beyer, Vice Chair Elect Beyer, and I are on the planning committee for the Friends of Life House Future Candidate Forum happening October 1st. Trinity Heights United Methodist Church, 9 o'clock. This is a chance for you to ask your questions of the candidates in small groups. You won't get that chance anywhere else. Uh, so we'd love to see you at that. And then secondly, if you're looking for something to do this Friday night, I'm going to be performing at the Flagstaff Foundry Variety Show at 8 p.m. Love to see you there. It's going to be fun. Any other to and from? What are, what are yeah. you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm singing an original song called Tools for a New Tomorrow, which is also the name of my new kind of vocational project. Cool. Very exciting. Oh, well, very exciting. Any other to and from? All right. Future agenda item request. Oh, wait, sorry. Yep. Marissa, did you have a to and from or did we already cover it? We already covered it. We, we covered the, yeah, we covered it. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, future agenda item requests. And we are following up. Hopefully, Commissioner White, I think Marissa was emailing you to get a little more information about some of your items. Yeah, thank you both for that. Yeah, great. All right. Well, I guess it would be nice on that uh, $184,000 grant on local food. Yeah, yeah, let's let's learn about it. Let's, yeah. We'll add that to our, yeah. to our list. Yeah. Okay, now to item nine, adjournment. I consider the meeting adjourned. Thanks for being here. Thanks Have a great month. See you on October 5th. Oh, 834. No, I'll say Bye, everyone. Thanks, Commissioner Kunkel. Yeah. Thanks, folks. Yeah, thank you all. Fun meeting. Thanks, Marissa. Bye. Feel better. Bye. Indeed. Yeah, feel better soon. Thank you. Have you been very sick, Marissa? Or how have you been? I I got COVID. Well, I know. So, I know. I, I, I just, yeah. I but it, has it been I, like I had it and it was like nothing, you know? Um, but other people have it. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, I was 
surprised it knocked me out. It totally caught me off guard. But yeah, I'm doing better today, though. Okay. All right. Yeah. Be back to full strength soon, please. Yes, yes absolutely. Thanks for being here, Marissa. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Thanks for helping so much, Jenny. Thank you, Bree. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes, thank you. Welcome, Bree. Thank you for doing that as well. Yeah, yeah congratulations, uh, new uh, chair and vice chair. Yay. Yay. Yay.